Aloha everyone and welcome to another Carbon 60 video by me, Kay Elmer, and in this video I'm covering part two of the What We Have Learned series about C60 in the last few years since C60 took off as a health supplement. And so let's jump right in. Uh, this uh, obviously I've got some disclaimers. This material is for research purposes only. C60 is not approved for consumption by the FDA. You understand that consuming C60 is experimental and you do so at your own risk. I do not have a stake in any C60 product or company and I do not get paid for making C60 videos. I'll be covering quite a few different products in this video. I just want to make sure that uh, everyone realizes I don't get paid for um, for mentioning videos and uh, me mentioning videos is certainly not an endorsement. Uh, and I also want to claim uh, fair use on a few copyright materials that I'd like to share with you today uh, because, you know, it's, some things are just so much better explained uh, from the source. So I'll have a lot of copyright material, um, or not a lot, but I'll have some that I, I just want to just claim fair use. Uh, just little clips of uh, other folks' videos just so that you can kind of hear it from the horse's mouth. I mean, exactly how stuff works, etc. cetera. Uh, a note on source materials. Uh, I do want to just, again, as just like I had in part one, there's so many uh, documents involved in this video that I had to review uh, in the part of the research for making it uh, that I, there's no way to link them all in the video description. So if it's a document which is, includes studies, patents, um, clinical trials, and they're all here in a directory on my Google Drive. Okay, so uh, when if you're interested in doing your own research, uh, I've provided copies of all of the documents that I'm mentioning. Uh, any video that I mention or any website, other, the links for those will be in the video description. So you're getting 100% of all of the sources that I'll be covering today in this video. Uh, so you can do your own research, 100% transparency. I don't want to make a claim without letting you know what the source is, all right? So that's kind of where we're going to go. And let's jump right in. First thing first is I want to do an addendum to part one because after that video, uh, you know, I was able to locate uh, the longevity study where Chris Burris from SES was talking about uh, him doing a new study. So this is going to be this is going to be awesome. It's going to take about five years. It's starting in 2020, but uh, SES is going to repeat the rat study. So this is going to be one more. So if you recall from part one, you know it's so critical that we have validation that the original rat study is was accurate, and so. Um, Ian Mitchell from Health C360 uh, had done a test using P53 knockout rats and validated the study but did not publish. And now SES with Chris Burris is going to be um, doing the rat study again one more time. Uh, and then this is the video. So all of the links again to any of these videos is in the video description below. Uh, and so there's a video describing how SES is going to be going uh, and doing that, uh, at, you know, rat study. So that's awesome. I mean, that's just amazing uh, that, you know, and, and kudos to you guys for doing that. Also, C60, I'm sorry, SES reached out to me and, and said, you know, here's the video uh, that I was talking about uh, in part one. And so this is their note is Chris Burris and SES Research Labs purchased 22 online C60 products in March 2020 to test their C60 concentrations as per their labels. The lab called the overall results woefully low because many of the companies only had 10 to 30 percent of the maximum concentrations promised. So, you know, bottom line, and that's this whole consumer C60 study. So now you've got that study I mentioned in uh, part one. You've got SES doing a separate study, and then you've got that old study on longevity. But here's what's really important. I mean, this is as of March. The other study was as of October, published, right? And bottom line is the consumer C60 oil products have now been tested, you know, formally twice. Uh, you know, I really don't count the longevity, but, you know, because it was so long ago. But it's been formally and officially tested twice, once by SES, which is the largest uh, C60 producer in the country, United States, uh, highly reputable, as well as a, you know, a science study. And bottom line is what you think you're getting most often is probably not what you're getting in terms of the quantity of C60 in the oil. And so here's a very important point from SES, which they're also known as C60 Evo, is you need an HPLC machine to measure the C60 concentration in the oil 
most of the online companies don't have. So, you know, it, it's a good point that they're making, and I, and I want to just repeat it, is if you're going to be spending a lot of money and this stuff is not cheap, then one of the most important questions you should ask from the seller is, have you tested your concentration to know for a fact, and can I see the test results, that what's on the label is true? And that's it. That's all you've got to do. And so there's a few reputable companies that are actually using HPLC, which is stands for High Performance Liquid Chromatography, in which they measure that the final product so that they know for a fact, hey, you know, that's what, what we said it was. It's 0.8 milligrams per milliliter. Because uh, otherwise, you're just buying oil. And, and, and this kind of, you know, and when you really think about this, the difference in in the amount of uh, C60 and different, uh, I mean, we're talking about 22 different products, right? The other one just measured four, so this is a lot more significant. But the idea, though, is that, hey, you know, you're not buying oil, you're buying C60. Um, and this might explain why there's so many people out there that say, oh, I took it, nothing happens. Uh, you know, and they have a bad, they had a bad experience, well, or non-experience. And it's like, well... What did you take? You know, I mean, that's now I'm starting to really wonder where all of that feedback came from because you've got people that'll take 660. I mean, you know, lots of people, really positive results. And then you have lots of people, if you look at all the comments, and I've done videos about people's comments on 660 and testimonials, and they're like, nothing happened. Well, maybe you took one of those those products that had nothing in it or a little, you know, or a little bit. So it really does explain um, why there's such a variance in testimonies. And then the other thing I do want to point out, and there's a link in the video description, uh, Chris Burris was uh, interviewed by Gwen Foster uh, about, it. I don't know, within the last year. There's a link in the, for the video. And in that video, and this is one of the reasons uh, that may be causing this problem in the industry, is that Chris uh, said that SES has discovered, or had discovered, that the larger the batch right of oil that you're spinning uh, or stirring um the the higher the risk of having uh, basically uh, dead zones in the vat meaning that where c60 will settle in in little pockets where it's just not catching in the stirring process or the movement of the oil and so the larger your vat the the longer this is what SES said in the video or chris said in the video is that the bigger your batch the longer you need to stir because of those dead zones and if any of you have ever made your own c60 and compared you doing it in a flask which is a conical flask versus a straight walled beaker you'll know as well if you just dump in the c60 in a flask it, it'll just sink and then slide off to the side and if you want to get that into solution you're going to need to stir longer and so it you know that's it's i've seen it i've done it myself and so that's why you know I go to straight wall beakers and I'll talk about that in a little while but but bottom line though is the bigger the vat the longer you need to stir and so actually SCS announced in that video that uh, they're stirring their C60 olive oil for three weeks now just to catch all that uh, those those dead zones and make sure that they get a full saturation so Another really important thing, because I know a lot of folks in the C60 industry watch these, this series uh, from the comments earlier. And so, uh, head, you know, heads up to that. Uh, if you want to hear what Chris said, the link is in the description. So, consumer C60 oil study does not look good for the community. And I highly recommend that you all start asking uh, the people you're buying C60 oil from or make it yourself. And if you're making it yourself and you want to know that you've got all the saturation, it's pretty simple. You stir it up, and then when you're done settling, you look at the bottom of the of the beaker, and there should be nothing there. And then you filter it, and there should be nothing on the filter. Hey, guess where it all went? It's all in solution, and you're good to go. So it's pretty simple at one liter at a time. But, you know, when you're making gallons, you know, that's where you got issues, right? And, of course, here's the proof. There's issues. There you go. Enough about that. Now, uh, I want to get into the what we have learned part two. Uh, the very first thing I want to chat about is the C60 hydrogen connection. You know, one of the coolest things about C60, and, and in the beginning, you know, I knew just generally how C60 worked. And basically, you know, it's an antioxidant, it's an electron donor, but I never really got deep into the chemistry. And so I kind of started looking at the studies, and sure enough, uh, not only is, uh, has the theory of how C60 can capture hydrogen ions, and here's a hydrogen molecule uh, in within the cage structure of the fullerene, and this is your, uh, this, this 
different diagram here is represents the the orbital uh, of each of the 60 atoms of the carbon 60 but here's like right here this would be a representation of the c60 fullerene cage uh, and then with trapped we're here would be a hydrogen uh, ion and then here would be a hydrogen molecule and then you've got the studies over here that and they're all in the you know they're all in the directory where they've been able to synthesize that in the lab in other words they've been able to verify and validate that the that the the openings of the cage are large enough to encompass you know something going inside and so they've been able to validate that through scientific studies so they've proven it that hey that's how it does work it will work and it, it's sized that way and then of course you've got this animation that kind of shows you what it would look like uh in, under that concept so the, the very first thought is hey c60 will and can and does capture hydrogen ions and hydrogen molecules within its cage-like structure and and why is that important so uh, right here there's been two recent videos within the last couple of months uh, one by Ken Schwartz which is a chemist and owner operator of C60 power and he does this C60 show great reference if you want to learn about C60 you should subscribe to the C60 uh, show that Ken does uh, and he's a chemist by trade and one of the original uh, you know uh, individuals in the C60 industry uh, and he made a video and he basically described the process of how C60 and hydrogen work together. And then if you want, there's another video that just came out recently by Dr. Joe Niozma. I hope I pronounced that correctly. He's a PhD and he's a professional toxicologist. Both of these gentlemen have over 30 years uh, working uh, in their field and specifically over a decade working with C60. And they both in two different videos describe exactly how C60 and hydrogen work together. And I just wanted to share uh, Ken's version primarily because it's a lot shorter than Joe's. Okay, so here's C60 how it works. C60 has a very unique shape. It's a spherical shape. Can you tell us about what the difference is between a single molecule and then the nanoparticles? Yeah, a sing on single molecule of C60 in between the, the five hexes here, all the chemical activity goes on right here. On a crystal surface, the chemical activity goes on the whole crystal surface. So it's sort of like a, uh, a catalytic surface. So it's, these are very localized and specific. A, chem a crystal has basically electrons move around and it acts completely differently. When you have a singly dissolved molecule C60, it's, it's very unique. It has a slight positive two charge, but most molecules achieve a positive charge by giving up an electron. C60 is different. It actually pulls a positively charged hydrogen ion out of the environment and stores it on the inside. And then when a negatively charged oxidative radical sticks to the C60, it releases that positively charged ion it neutralizes it back to water or oxygen or some other neutral substance and it's, it resets itself so it can keep doing this thousands of times before it exits the body and because c60 makes really no permanent chemical bonds in the body it washes out on an average of 10 days c60 so there you go so the concept here right is that c60 because it's like a little cage it's like the little Uber driver for hydrogen and it transports hydrogen all throughout your body. And because it can pass the blood brain barrier, it goes everywhere and it just delivers the hydrogen. And then so because of its charge, it's got a negative charge and toxins and pathogens have a positive charge. The, when, as soon as a pathogen sticks to the C60, the C60 will do an electron transfer, right? To the, to the toxic substance or the pathogen, neutralize it. Right. And it just, you know, basically breaks down into its common elements. And then then C60 goes and captures another little hydrogen ion and then does it again. And that's what's the beauty of C60. It's just this incredibly, you know, little miracle of, of, a, of an atom or sorry, molecule that will act as an incredible uh, free radical scavenger in your body because of this C60 and hydrogen. They work together, and that's my point. And the other point I want to make is what happens if you don't have enough hydrogen? So you just, you know, if we look at the sources of hydrogen in our bodies, all right, obviously we all get it through breathing. And, you know, if you've ever done a martial arts or done any of the Ayurvedic arts like yoga, you'll understand that there's multiple different ways to breathe, and a lot of people don't breathe very well. And it's kind of silly that we all breathe 24 hours a day, but, you know, really taking a deep breath, emptying out the bottom of your lungs, so forth, et cetera, you don't know if you've taken that. But so we all breathe, right? So we're all taking in hydrogen all the time. But then hydrogen also comes from all the water we drink, and especially hydrogen comes from the fiber we eat. So so between these three things, and especially, it's kind of like, look at it, like two-thirds of our hydrogen intake is based on, do you drink a lot of water, and do you eat a lot of fiber? 
And if you discuss the, the standard American diet and the standard American, and I don't know if this is true in the rest of the planet, but, you know, people aren't that, pro, you know, their proclivity is not towards water and fiber. And so that's why, you know, there was this recommendation in the original days where it said, hey, whenever you take C60, eat an apple. And so what was the reason behind that? Fiber. And what's the reason behind fiber? Hydrogen. But here's the thing. If you're, one, if you're a standard American diet individual and you have a, you can literally have a hydrogen deficiency and so the deficient body that's deficient on hydrogen basically uh, cannot assimilate water fatty nutrients and blocks uh, block and body lacks material which is vitamins to joints marrow marrow and nerves and brain this is a, a deficiency in hydrogen uh, in addition, it adds in additionally uh, auditory structures and other body parts that need lubrication for optimum movement. But here's some signs of hydrogen deficiency. So if this describes you, I'm going I'm to make a point. Uh, if you have emaciation, crampy tendons, appetite for salty foods, irritability, <laughs> yeah, uh, dry, wrinkled skin, lack of perspiration, gout, arthritis, excessive body heat, and shrinkage of the liver, you might have. A deficiency in hydrogen and what's the point that I'm trying to make in what we have learned about C60 well the C60 needs hydrogen to work and if you don't have if you're deficient in hydrogen and you have some of these symptoms then in, and you're taking C60 you're not getting the optimal benefit that C60 can give you that's my point so uh, you know I just really want to stress how important C60 and hydrogen they need to go together so if you're going to be taking C60 by all means, make sure you eat a high-fiber diet and you drink a lot of water, right? And that will actually make the C60 do better for you or perform better for you. Okay, point made. Now, the next point I want to talk about and what we have learned uh, in the last few years is C60 oil production methods. And this is something that really started again in 2012 when the rat study came out. And this is right here. This is how the rat study did it. They basically took C60 that they bought from SES and they added it to extra virgin olive oil. Uh, they stirred the, on a magnetic stir, they stirred the solution for two weeks in the dark. We covered the, the whole light issue, so they knew to keep it dark. Then they put it in a centrifuge at 5G, at five times gravity, for one hour. And then after that, they filtered it through a 0.25 micron millipore filter. And that was it. And then that's what they gave to the rats. And so now in the last three years, uh, you know, and I'm sort of the guy on YouTube that's done more videos about this than anybody, you know, but, you know, a lot of us and, you know, the longevity guys and all of us do it at home guys, you know, we've been making our own C60 oil and I've been tinkering and testing and experimenting for three years now. OK, and, and, and basically I'm plugged into how everyone else is doing it, and what their results are. And so here are the things that what we have learned about making your own C60 oil at home uh, in the last three years. And so one of the first things is if you want an optimal output product at the end when you're done, then what we've learned is obviously you want to, you know, you want to pulverize. And this is so important. And I haven't done a video about this yet. Sorry. Uh, but, you know, if you pulverize your C60 before you add it to the oil, then you'll get a much, you'll get not a much, but a higher saturation rate than you would have if you didn't and you can decrease your stir time and of course we know we in the first part part one we talked about solvent free clearly you want to go with the solvent free option so if you're going to be buying c60 get a solvent free and if you can get it pulverized or pulverize it yourself for better results now the thing about the olive oil as i talked about in the other video you know it's it's so important that the olive oil is authentic that it's real olive oil um, and there's actually a, uh, I, I just posted a Dr. Berg video, uh, I'll put that in the video description again, about how to determine whether or not your olive oil is authentic. It's super important because it's more, the odds are it's not. If you go to the grocery store, most likely you won't find real olive oil there. Uh, they, they'll mix it with some other kind of oil, right? But so it's got to be authentic. It's got to be real. And most importantly, well not secondly, it's got to be fresh. All right, you know, because if it's been sitting on that store shelf for too long, you're getting partially rancid oil. You're not going to get an optimum product when you're done. And that's the whole point, right? You're going to be ingesting this for your health. Got to do it right. Now, the next thing about the stirring, again, if you're using pulverized C60, if you're just using regular powdered C60 and you just sprinkle it in, well, you know, uh, it's going to take two weeks, just like in the body study, right? That's the body was one of the scientists. But if you pulverize it, what I've learned in the, in the last few years is that you really reduce it. You can actually get it down to one week. 
So you can you can save a lot of time by just pulverizing the C60 before you put it in. And then again, I want to point out again what SES discovered was if it's a large volume of C60 oil, you're going to go longer. You're going to go three weeks. Okay, so you know if you're just doing a liter at a time. Big difference, right? And then you want to do, you want to, most importantly, you want to minimize the exposure of your oil to air. You know, because you, you know, oxygen will oxidize the oil. It'll also oxidize the C60. So you want to keep it airtight. Now, what the pr commercial producers do is they'll pump in nitrogen. I know some folks do argon, uh, but they use different, uh, you know, uh, air uh, gases or nitrogen and things like that, where they'll just pump that into their into their vats so that there's no air at all, and they need to keep the air. So you minimize exposure to air and oxygen, right, slash oxygen, during the stirring process. Another thing that's really uh, pertinent that I've learned in the last, or what we have learned as a community in the last uh, you know few years, is as you're stirring, and this is something that I've been tinkering around with, uh, I, got, I upgraded my, my uh, magnetic stirrers last year where I've got one that actually has a really really nice it's full-on you know lab quality as opposed to the little inexpensive blue ones we all started with i got a lab quality one where i could add heat i could i could dial it into the precise you know amount of heat and precise rotations per hour all that you know per, per minute and so forth really nice uh, uh stir and i've discovered by tinkering around and i've made four batches now and i'm going to record the fifth i wanted to make sure it was consistent my results were consistent it'll be a video coming out in the future but then i discovered that by adding heat to the stir process guess what i've got my stirs down to 24 hours i literally 24 hours if you pulverize it and you add heat and i'll do that video uh, you can get your stir times down to 24 hours you know for one liter all right so it's pretty cool and, and i've actually been able to prove it you know i've done four batches already and it came out i did one with avocado oil one with uh, uh udo's oil one with a, a mix of uh, avocado and, and coconut and then i made one with olive oil and they all came out the same the, the oil came out as a quality finished product with only a 24 hour stir with heat okay so that was pretty amazing and so i think that's kind of a cool development most recently i just been doing that that was my summer project okay now uh the one thing too about stirring is use a beaker not a flask as i pointed out earlier flask will create dead zones where the ccc gets trapped in there and won't get into solution so use a straight wall beaker if i've learned anything that's number one okay is use a straight wall beaker i don't use flasks anymore at all except filtering okay so just use straight wall beakers make sure you, you know i just put you know cellophane on top and cover cover it and make sure it's dark and then again too one other thing about magnetic stirs is that you know, I've learned a lot about magnetic stirs in the last three years. And I'll tell you what, you get one that's rated for three liters. Well, yeah, it's three liters of water. So one that's rated for three liters uh, of water barely stirs 500 milliliters of oil, okay, because of the viscosity of the fluid. So, you know, if you need to make sure that whatever you're using and the quantity you're putting on it, like those little blue cheap ones, right, uh, you can't put a liter of oil on top of that guy. It's rated for three liters but you put a liter of oil it won't stir it you've got to do I, I only can stir 500 milliliters of oil on one of those little blue guys those little blue stirs because it, that's the maximum it can happen and the key the key to knowing whether or not your stir can handle it is you need when it starts stirring you need to see a dimple on the surface you don't want a deep funnel like a tornado because that's going to be sucking air into solution you don't want that you just want to see this little dimple on the top of the oil while it's stirring and then you know that the whole beaker full of oil is moving around if you don't see that dimple then only the bottom parts mixing and you're not going to get c60 into solution and you're, you're going to have a very poor quality finished product okay so that's really important now the other thing too you know about step three was you know uh, if nobody owns this and we're humans right how many of you guys own a centrifuge i certainly don't want to buy one especially one that can process a liter at a time, and that'd be really expensive. And so, you know, the whole idea and then what we've discovered over time in the last three years is that you can replicate this 5G for one hour just by letting it sit dark place, right, and put cover it up, and just let it sit after you stir for 10 days. And what that sort of does, and, and that's kind of the optimum number of days, you know, it could be two weeks, if you know, whatever. I usually just go to the next weekend or whatever. But the idea, though, is that it simulates so, so 5G for one hour versus like 1G for 
10 days. You know, it's sort of the same thing. You let the whatever's suspended in solution that's not been turned into lipofullerene, you let that settle to the bottom only if you added too much. Now, if you add precisely 0.8 milligrams per milliliter or just 0.8 grams to a full liter, right? Because then, and you stir that up, you, you really won't, you know, even if you settle it, you won't find anything on the bottom. Uh, so there's some question about whether or not you need to do that. Uh, in, in my perspective, but bottom line is I let everything settle just to be sure. Now, the last part about step four uh, on the body method in the rat study was that they filtered uh, through a 0.25 micro millipore, uh, micron millipore filter, all right? And there's an interview out there with Fathi Musa, one of the uh, scientists of the rat study, where he tells the interviewer that it's not necessary to filter only if, and they were filtering because they needed to have the exact you know, they needed to know that every single batch of oil or C60 oil that they were giving the rats was exactly the same, right? Because of the whole stirring issue in the, in the dead zones and, you know, all that stuff I just said. So if you don't filter, then you don't have a consistency in terms of you know exactly what's in the oil. Because what the filter will do, it is re it'll remove any large particulates uh, in, the, in the oil, Okay, so that you know you have exactly the same product every single time. And now for commercial sellers who, you know, have, have their act together, they're filtering because they need to know that, hey, you know, this is, we have to produce the same thing every time because, you know, it's standard of quality. Okay, and then for home people, it's optional. And what I found out and what I have learned in the last few years is that it really is optional because some people, you know, you don't, you just let it settle, pour off the top, you're good to go, all right? And then for other people, you know, you got to remember that a 0.25 microns is, you know, is, is 250 nanometers. And what does that mean? That if you filter it through a 0.25 micron filter, you still will have particulates under 250 nanometers, but you could have up to a 249 mil, no, I'm sorry, nanometer particulate suspended in the oil even after you filter. And that's, it's kind of large. I mean, pulverized C60 is usually down to the, like 130 uh, nanometers, but you could literally have some pretty large particulates, either some impurities in the oil or residual C60 or whatever uh, floating around in there and it still would be there. And what I have learned and this is, and I've actually had a couple of people confirm they have the same issue, is that if you're prone to kidney stones, um, then it's kind of like, think about kidney stones. It's like a, a bucket full of pebbles, right, uh, or, or little rocks. And, and that's kind of how your kidneys look, or basically, right? And so, you know, fluids flushing through the bucket because there's plenty of holes between the rocks and the pebbles. But if you start taking something that's got smaller particulate so let's say you dump a bunch of sand in that same bucket you know how well is the flu or the water going to flow through that bucket now that's full of sand pebbles and rocks so you don't want to you don't you basically bottom line my point is if you have kidney stone issues filter because personally I, I went like six or eight months where I wasn't filtering and it gave me a kidney stone because all of these particulates got jammed up in my kidneys uh, and so I had a problem but, you know, and so that's that's only for folks, and that's my what I've learned personally and uh, a couple other people I know that have told me they had the same experience. So uh, otherwise, it's just optional. If you don't have any problems with that, you don't need to filter, uh, and, and there you go. Okay? So now uh, let's talk about sonication. What have we have learned? So if you know, if you've been following my videos, you know that, you know, I basically tinkered around. It's one of the first things I theorized because when I read the rat study, I theorized, well, you know, I, I make liposomal vitamin C all the time using a sonicator. I wonder if you could make, you know, C60 oil using a sonicator. And sure enough, I went and bought a big one. And I started making C60 oil with sonication and discovered that there were about three or four different uh, C60 commercial producers using uh, ultrasonics. So it's like, okay. Uh, and so it did, and it works. I mean, it worked fine, and I made C60 oil with sonicators uh, for quite a while. And then so, but, you know, as I look back over time and I start doing more of the, you know, like, let's read the studies about this, uh, as opposed to let's just tinker and jump in with both feet. What the studies tell us 
in 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 when you put oil in an ultrasonic uh, sonicator, uh, here's three different studies that just randomly pulled up when you when I went and did a uh, research. You're like, okay, you know, oils and ultrasound. You know, do a search like that. And and here's one called study of ultrasonic treatment and temperature and lipid modification. Uh, and their conclusions, uh, you know, therefore ultrasound could increase deter deterioration of food lipids. And another study was different edible oils, olives, sunflower, soybeans show significant changes in their composition, chemical, and flavor due to ultrasonic treatment. And here's another study that says, the study shows an increase of formed radicals in sonicated oils, as well as the modifications of physiochemical parameters evidencing an oxidation of treated oil. So it doesn't, you know, the studies are not that favorable, you know, towards using a sonicator for C60 oil. And maybe it works okay for liposomal vitamin C because you're using lecithin or lecithin and not oil. Okay, and then there's one other thing. You know that uh, video that I mentioned with Chris Burris of SES with Gwen Foster? If you listen to that video, he also talks about sonication. And one other property of sonication is if it, when you have ultrasonics and they encounter a micro air bubble uh, and it bursts that bubble, well, it, because it's so small and, and the frequencies uh, hit that thing and it explode it, it creates a really high temperature micro burst inside the oil. And that, and that part of the reasons that you have this oxidation is because of those little, you know, I mean, it's, 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 um, we're talking microbursts, right? But, but it's, it's extremely high heat and really, really nanoparticle uh, size. And it's out throughout the oil. And that, that might be one of the reasons of oxidation. But at the end of the day, okay, and, you know, Chris talks about it if you want to listen to it. At the end of the day, the science studies do not support using ultrasonic. Uh, you know, sonicators to make C60 oil. I, that's the, what we have learned. And then the other thing too, personally, um, I stopped using sonicators before I ever read the studies, okay, uh, because it's sort of a hassle. I mean, you know, I bought one, well, I bought a, a three liter one and, you know, got to remember now you're putting C60 oil in a flask in a bath of water. So when you have a three liter ultrasonic machine, it holds, quote, three liters of water in the bath and you put and so what happens is, is with three liter ultrasonic, you know, it costs like $160. It only processes 500 milliliters of oil at a time because the bath is so small. And if you want one that holds a liter at a time, you're going to spend three or $400 on this machine. And it just doesn't make any sense. And so what happened when I was doing it was every time I went to sonicate oil, I'd have to run it twice. And, and it, first of all, when that thing's running, it just like jars your teeth. But the whole idea is you got to pull out the machine, fill it up full of water, get the temperature right, put the oil in, turn it on, and then you got to make sure you, that it doesn't get too hot. And then you got to do it twice to just get one liter of oil done. And then then you got to you know empty it out and put it away. You know, it, bottom line, it just became a real hassle as opposed to pulverize C60, add it to oil, put it on a stir, and you're done. Let you know, set it and forget it. And I got to tell you, I'm lazy, and so I just have gravitated towards only stirring. And not using my sonicators because it's just too much of a hassle. And then on top of this, now that I've read the studies, I'm not. I'm probably not going to be using sonicators again. And that's what we have learned about C60 oil uh, and and using sonication. So there, there's that. Now let's talk about what we have learned about the C60 product evolution. So if you've watched my series, I did a three-part series called Alt C60, which I covered the alternative C60 products on the market today. And so what we have learned is that C60 is expanding beyond just the concept of a C60 oil you ingest and that there are other ways to uh, benefit from C60, either through topical, uh, whether there's uh, facial oils and body creams and face creams and so forth, uh, which are these are some exceptional products, by the way. I really like the uh, the Akasha brand, which is a Layla C60 or Layla Lab C60. I use these products daily. I use the C60 Labs makes a, a, a cream that that I, it's like I use that daily. I mean, I, it's really awesome. It actually helps uh, with eczema. It's pretty cool. It's got C60 in it. So there's some C60 topicals. So not only can you take the oil through ingestion but you also can p apply it as a topical and so we've seen this evolution and what we've learned is that it works and that there's a demand for it so there's a c60 topical environment that's out there right now and most recently this year sorry this year 
Live Longer Labs came out with the concept of doing atomized C60 uh, oil. So getting just a, this is just your typical atomizer. And if you put C60 oil, uh, and this is specific, uh, specifically you have to filter the oil. This You have to make sure you filter the oil. But if you take filtered C60 oil and you put it in an atomizer and you inhale the atomized C60, uh, it does wonderful things for people with asthma and, and breathing issues and things like that. I use this whenever I get congested. It works awesome. So you can breathe in C60, atomized C60. Uh, is something that we've learned that, hey, that works. It's pretty cool. And then there's this kind of like offshoot where there's a C60 frequency, the molecular frequency of C60. And if you go to this site that sells the, the, you know, the audios for it, you know, there's some testimonials on there about people who are literally uh, experiencing benefits by listening to, you know, by basically exposing themselves to the frequency of C60. I'm on the fence about this because I'm just not, you know, not really sure. I'm not really sure about, you know, putting on a set of headphones and I'm going to get a C60, you know, effect. I I just, I kind of have a, I don't know about that. Uh, But, you know, but hey, you know what? If it works for some people, it works. That's awesome. But the idea, though, is that we've learned that there's different ways you can take C60 and it just gets, you know, there's just new ones all the time. And it's it's pretty cool. You know, I think, uh, you know, if if you think back towards like, you know, when they discovered C60, did they, you know, did they ever even conceive the idea that it would become... You know this 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 expansive in terms of how CCC would be used. Uh, you know, in terms of health and and all of these different ways to take it. I think it's really amazing uh, the product evolution over time, and that we've learned that it it works in all these different ways. People are actually getting something from it. Now, in terms of topicals, I do want to chat about one thing that I thought was really interesting in the research was that in this one study, it said the skin penetration of, and kinetics of pristine fullerenes topically exposed in industrial organic solvents. So what these guys did was uh, they basically they, 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 they tested um, uh, the effect of, of C60 topically when using different forms of solvents. Now, some of the solvents are, are pretty nasty solvents, and they use mineral oil, which obviously is fine. So, but the idea was is they wanted to see how well does skin, uh, how well does C60 penetrate skin, okay? And so as I was reading this thing, what was interesting to me was, this is the quote, that the dose sites were tape stripped and skin biopsies were taken after 26 tape strips for quantitative analysis when dose in toluene, uh, cyclohexane, or chloroform, pristine fullerenes penetrated Okay, this is important. Pristine pen, uh, fullerenes penetrated deeply into the stratum uh, corne- corneum and the primary barrier of skin. More C60 was detected in the stratum corneum when dosed in chloroform compared to toluene or cytohexane. But this is where my point is. Fullerenes were not detected in skin when dosed in mineral oil. Okay, so how are all these topicals made? Well, these topicals are made with c60 in oil uh, added to a bunch of other healthy you know other stuff that's good for your skin so i got to thinking that okay well you know what this is interesting because we know that from part one that c60 in cosmetics started like way back in 1995 uh or around there uh by a company called vitamin c60 it's a japanese firm and they make a product called uh like i think they call it a or so ROS sponge or something like that. And they also trademark the word lipofullerene. And anyway, they sell this product so that it's an ingredient in cosmetics. And so I was thinking that, you know, you know, this is interesting because here's a study that says C60 doesn't penetrate if it's in oil. And so, but it doesn't mean, it doesn't mean that it doesn't work. It just doesn't go deep into your skin. It doesn't get into where the, where your capillaries are so that you can actually take a dose of C60 like you would ingesting where it gets into your bloodstream and travels around your body, but that if you use a topical, what this implies is that it primarily just does radical, you know, it just does ROS scavenging or radical oxygen species, free radical, and it just kind of just uh, treats the oxidation on the surface of your skin, right? That's my point. And so that's got me thinking that, okay, maybe all of the topicals sort of are just topicals where they only treat... Uh, ra- you know, free radical damage on the surface of your skin and maybe just a little bit d- lower, but it doesn't penetrate based on this study. So I've done some experiments since that in the last couple of months. And because it just kind of was, you know, this study was like really made me thinking. And if you know, I've done three videos already about C60 topicals. I'm kind of a little OCD about C60 and topical ever since I had that lab accident. So here's what I've learned. Okay, what we have learned is that well, first of all, it might not go deep 
using oil. And so how would you make it go deep? So in other words, how would I want, if I wanted to do a targeted application of C60, let's say to my knee, which I have like the uh, kind of like a bum knee uh, from an accident I had. And so I was thinking, well, how do I, you know, I take C60 every day, but how do I just, you know, saturate the heck out of my knee with C60? And I was using this, and then I was thinking, well, if this is true, then it, that doesn't work as well as if I maybe got and used something called a penetrator, which is an additional additive that you can add to the C60 that then that goes deep into the skin and then would carry the C60 with it as a carrier, right? So now, when I, you know, when I did the lab accident, and all of you guys remember that video, uh, you know, I was using pulverized C60, and it was suspended in 100% denatured alcohol. I mean, 100%, 200 proof alcohol. Right. And and so I spilled this on my hands and didn't sleep for two days. Uh, and I went into full what we would now call Lucy mode from the movie Lucy. Just space. I mean, it was like really it's hard to explain, but you go into this look zone and you're there for a long time and you can't sleep and you're basically on it. You're like the you're the best you version of you you could be. Uh, <laughs> and so uh, that's called mega dosing C60. I don't recommend it, okay, especially if you like to sleep at night. Uh, but I did this to myself and I realized, hey, you know what? Alcohol works as a penetrator, but it, it's pretty harsh, okay? I mean, you don't want alcohol on your skin and that sort of thing. So, but it worked. And that was the thing I was thinking. Well, if it doesn't work with oil, then why not use a penetrator? So these are my experiments, and I just want to share with you what I've learned. Is that I did learn that pulverized C60 and alcohol will penetrate the skin, get into your bloodstream, and you will feel an effect in your brain. Now, and so my most recent experiment now, uh, I've been doing two other experiments, and I just want to share with you the results. Is that I decided that okay, if um, what if I take just just you know instead of like mixing it with all these other beautiful creams and and yo-yo ba and all this other stuff that's really great oils for your skin and i just take the c60 oil and i just add transcutal which is a skin penetrator just like dmso and these are two uh, additives that will then act as a carrier and draw c60 deep into your skin um, you know if you do the studies on these two and i by the way i did a video about that uh if you want to learn more about penetrators, I did a whole video on it, okay? So anyway, so I just made this concoction the other day, and this is what it came out to. And, and one of the, there's two things I wanted to know was how much, uh, you know, if I did mix transcutal with C60 oil, what would be the uh, saturation rate of the transcutal? In other words, would it mix into solution and not just mix but hold into solution? So I added 20 milliliters of transcutal to 40 milliliters of C60 oil that I'd made. And what happened was I discovered that it does. Uh, that you know, here's when it was finished stirring, and I was stirred for 24 hours, and then I let it sit for five days to see if they would separate, and they did it. And so what came out from the study when I removed the transcutal is I determined that that if you did this, the C60 oil will saturate transcutal. Or I'm sorry, the other way around. Transcutal will saturate into C60 oil. 11.1 percent of the transcutal was gone. It went into solution, and I pulled out the whether the, the 89, 88.9 uh, percent of the transcutal I extracted from solution. So there was an ability for, uh, when you do this, you will actually be able to uh, get transcutal into solution with C60 in olive oil. So that was my goal. So this, the second thing was, is okay, hey, that worked, cool. So the second idea was, okay, well, then obviously I'm gonna use it. So I put it on my knee, and you know what? With, the, with Like I put it on my knee, and prior to that I was using a senar, and I wasn't getting the, the benefits I was normally gonna get from the senar, because I'd really just screwed up my knee this time. And so I did put it on, and I would say, and this is anecdotal, uh, that it did help with the pain, that the pain went away after 24 hours, and I put it on for a few days, um, and then it really kept the, kept the pain at bay. And so I think that that's a relationship. If you study C60, um, then you will know that, hey, guess what? C60 is good for inflammation. So obviously the inflammation went down and the pain went down. That's my theory, okay? So I felt that it did really well. But, you know, uh, what, what it, but it didn't. But it didn't cure it. That was the thing. I mean, uh, you know, so I still have the, tr I've been treating my knee for quite a while now. But I'm just saying that I believe it did uh, anecdotally uh, reduce inflammation and thus reduce pain. So this concoction was kind of helpful. And I got a little, little bottle of it here on, on, on my desk and I use it every day. <laughs> okay, now the other thing too is I've been doing this experiment using pulverized C60 where I would just pulverize C60 uh, in different um carriers but then add dmso afterwards and that definitely works the dmso works really well to carry 
the C60 into it, but then doing that, uh, it gave me this really weird rash. So I'm not really happy about about that experiment. So right now, I'm just what have I learned is that that seems to work better. <laughs> that's that's it. I don't want to go too far. I, I really get kind of carried away on C60 topicals. Okay, so uh, now let's talk about what else have we learned about the product evolution of C60. So, you know, obviously it all started with C60 in olive oil due to the rat study. But ever since then, you know, look at all the different oils that are currently on the market right now. Everything from almond down to sunflower and hemp oil, CBD, black seed oil, pumpkin seed oil. And so these are all the oils. And, and what does this mean is that, hey, C60 will basically enter into, into these different, these other oils are good with C60. People are buying them and that you're able to mix C60 with a lot more oils other than olive. But the thing about it, though, if you look at the science behind it, everyone has already confirmed olive oil is the most uh, optimum oil for C60. There's something about the polyphenols and the and the long chain triglyceride combinations in olive oil that are make make it very unique. OK, so that it's like the best companion for C60. But that doesn't stop other folks from saying, well, I'll just mix C60 with this other oil and get the benefit of that particular oil along with the C60. And so that's some of the things that we're seeing and that, you know, it does work. You can put it in these different oils. It will saturate into into these oils and it will carry it uh, just like it would if it was olive oil. OK, so you're seeing that that's the product evolution. And, and we're learning that it, you can do a lot more different oils. We're also learning that the capsule market kind of works out really well but one of the things that we've learned about the capsule market is that if you you know that taking c60 in olive oil in capsules just doesn't make any sense at all because you won't you know you have to take five capsules just to get one teaspoon and it just doesn't make any sense at all and you don't get any additional benefit uh, other than you're just going to be eating a lot of gelatin right but here's the thought though capsules of other specifically different oils right gives you the benefit of that oil in the doses that you would normally take it in, like black seed, right? So, you know, like for this product right here, I tried two bottles of it, took three a day for two months. And I got to tell you, I had the most incredible digestive experience that I've ever had because it, this thing was awesome in regards to my digestive health. And that was the black seed oil on top of the C60. So it's more so from the black seed oil uh, than the C60. But I'll tell you what, the combination was amazing. Uh, and so, you know, I, I really think that... Uh, I think encapsulation of C60 oils is going to be good. Uh, we're seeing that it works, but the whole thing was is from a practical standpoint, it works better with, uh, uh, let's say, boutique oils than it would with olive because you're just not going to get a benefit taking capsules of olive oil C60, but you will if it's a specialty oil and that oil does something unique, okay? Because no one's going to take a teaspoon of black seed oil by mouth unless you really, really like torturing yourself. Okay, so then uh, we're also seeing that what have we learned is that people are now putting additives. Now, this has been going on for a little while with the, uh, it originally started with, uh, hell, you know, at Carbon 60 Plus, but, or I'm sorry, Live Pet. It's part of the whole Ian Mitchell uh, companies. He's got three different brands, right? And so anyway, so one of the things about additives, and even with this one, this one is C60 and black oil plus acetaxin. But this one right here, and you'll see one on uh, Live Longer Labs does one with Curcumin. But this one is the Health C3, uh, C360 product called Revive. And there's a one for women called Rejuvenate. And they've out added a different uh, ingredients in here. And so in, in addition to the lipofullerene, which is a C60 in oil, you've got serapaptase, L-carnosine, and CoQ10. And so these other different additives provide additional benefits in conjunction with lipofullerene produce an, a, a, basically an enhanced effect. So it's like C60 with other stuff makes the C60 better, right? And so there's a video uh, I highly encourage, if you have not seen this two-hour interview with uh, Ian Mitchell on the Luke Story uh, show, uh, the video uh, link below, there's a link for it. It's it's awesome, and where he goes into great detail about how each one of these work biologically and, how, and, and what's the reason that they did this and how it all works together uh, in terms of basically helping you improve your health but also repair damage. Uh, to your body and it's just pretty amazing and they did the science behind it you know like I mentioned earlier in part one they have a commercial lab they got two of them there's the, so they're professional scientists working with universities uh, making commercial products and they did the, the research and he describes that research in which additives when you blend them in with C60 oil it just the overall effect is 
way more pronounced than just taking C60. That's what we have learned is additives are awesome with C60. Now, the last thing is that pets, it's great for pets. Uh, the original uh, uh, C60 oil for pets was actually Ian Mitchell's company called Live Pet. And now you're seeing more and more uh, commercial producers start making products for pets. And so here's the one from SES. And I think that what we have learned above anything else, and there are a lot of great testimonials about how well C60 works for horses and cats and dogs. Uh, is that it is awesome for pets as well as humans. And if, and if you have an older dog, an older cat, or, or a horse, uh, you know, it, it's awesome for these critters. I'm sure for other critters as well. And so, you know, it's something to think about, and that's what we've learned is, hey, you know what? It's great for pets. Now, let's talk about where do we go from here. And I just want to say we're at the 49-minute mark, and I, and I apologize. This thing's gotten really long because there's so much content. But I, I wanted to squeeze this in. Because it's part of the what we have learned. Because what we have learned now will determine the future of what will where we go from here. And so I'm, I want to apologize for the extra long video right now. Uh, because I really wanted to, to squeeze this in and not make a part three. Because where we go from here with C60 is probably uh, one of the most amazing things that I've, of, from all the research that I've done. And again, you know, it took a month to do part one. It's taken equally as long <laughs> to do part two. And, and so... I want to cover this, and this is so important. Where do we go from here? Where does the C60 industry go? Where is the science taking us? And I think it's just a fascinating uh, you know, research that I did, and I just, I'm just i so excited to share it with you. So here's my first thoughts, right? Is right off the bat, where do we go from here, 2021 and beyond? Well, when you look at the C60 oil market, I think what we're going to see is we're going to continue to see new oils. There's people in the chat rooms talking about, hey, you know, uh, using like pine nut oil and different things like that, which just people keep coming up with, which is better ideas and how they could mix C60 into oil and get the benefit of both. And then also, I think we're going to be looking at oil blends. I mean, there's one individual that posted on the other day on the Telegram chat room about he made a two-thirds hemp uh, one-third pumpkin seed oil blend and it just it, it i think it uh did something for him that he had a problem with that i forgot the exact post but he, he just was raving about this blend that he discovered that he made uh you know and then he said hey this is great you gotta try this so we're obviously we're all gonna try it so you know i think we're gonna see um uh, new oils i think will continue to come out in the future i think we're gonna see more different olive oil blends now, in terms of capsules, like I mentioned earlier, I think that the C60 olive oil capsule market's going to die off. But I think we're going to start seeing more C60 uh, oil in capsules from things that you don't want to take by mouth. <laughs> Oils that taste really bad. Uh, you're going to see that in capsules, and, and I think that's going to keep going on. I think in terms of additives, I mean, the sky's the limit. I mean, the sky's the limit. I'm already trying to figure out, oh, well, you know, what could I add, uh, you know, to my C60 oil? And just as an, as an example, I was thinking, well, why don't I make a C60 oil, right, and then put in... Uh, uh, you know, uh, let's say uh, niacin, right? Uh, nicotinamide, micronuclide, and add res resver resveratrol, right? Add those two components in there, and I want to see how well it saturates. And then you could create like this little anti-aging C60 oil that's got, you know, those two anti-aging components to it. So that's kind of one of the things. If you watch... Uh, you know, David Blair uh, with, uh, with the, uh, I think it's Harvard, I think, uh, you know, talks a lot about, you know, the anti-aging properties of, of nicotinamide, micronuclide, and as well as resveratrol. And those two, com those two in combinations to improve your NAD uh, and your body combined with C60L, amazing, right? So there's a great idea right there. You can take that wherever you want to go, anybody. Uh, but I think we're going to see a lot more with additives from the, imp uh, from the perspective of C60 topicals. I think definitely there will be more new, new cosmetics coming out. I think we're just at the, I think, I, you know, I called it uh, in, in, 19, or in, sorry, in 2019, I called 2020 the year of topical C60. And sure enough, a whole bunch of new products came out uh, that year. So I'm going to call 2021 where we're going to see more C60 cosmetics. Uh, but I think, you know, if anyone takes me up on my whole idea about the therapeutic use of C60 topicals, meaning C60s with penetrators that will you can target an area of your body and, and just really mega dose a particular area of your body with C60 as a therapeutic, I think, uh, I, you know, maybe one of you, you know, uh, brilliant minds out there will take my idea, take my idea 
and run with it and start making therapeutic products. So that's just a uh, that's just a prediction. I'm hoping that that happens because you know I think it's a great idea. Now, in terms of other things that are happening that are pretty amazing, is when you look at the C60 derivatives. Okay, and so the C60 derivatives out there, you you've got some things that are about to launch that are, are and they're and they're just they're, they're doing soft launches right now in terms of taking C60 and modifying it so that it's no longer a pristine C60 molecule, meaning a pristine C60 molecule molecule is only 60 carbon atoms in a fullerene cage, period, right? But if you add any additional molecules and atoms to that C60 cage, then it becomes a derivative. And so some of the things about these derivatives is that they have incredible properties themselves. So when you look at the anti-metastatic serum, uh, there's actually been a clinical trial. This has been produced by the Health 360 Ian Mitchell, uh, and he's actually done a clinical trial on that. The clinical trial is in the directory. Uh, that's just amazing. I mean, it really, really, really was very beneficial in combination with a keto diet for dogs in terms of tumor suppression. You know, you want to you know definitely t uh, listen to the Ian Mitchell interview. Uh, and he talks about his anti-metastatic serum. It hasn't hit the market yet, but I expect it. I'm guessing, hopefully, that you'll be able to buy it uh, come 2021. And then there's also the idea of fullernols. Now, fullernols is another C60 derivative. I'll get more into that. Then there's the idea of a, of a fullerene. It's not a C60 molecule, but it's a fullerene. And I'm covering it in this video about the where do we go from here because some of the research coming out about carbon nano onions as it relates to a health supplement is pretty amazing. So I wanted to share that with you too. And then we look at C60 optics. And so optics, you know, what do I mean by that? Well, guess what? As I was doing my research, I was going through all the patents, right? Because if you want to know what's going to happen in the future, you just look at where the patents are. Follow the patents. If people are patenting stuff, then they're going to launch their products. And so what has been approved so far in the patent world are C60 patents, and one of them is that anti-metastatic serum, right? So the anti-metastatic serum, there's already a patent for that. There's been a patent on just the creation of lipofullerenes, uh, a patent on lipofullerene solubility. And then I found this patent on optical light filters using C60, which I thought was amazing. Uh, you know, and so I'll get into that. And then, of course, there's this new one. These are all new ones, right, uh, in the last few years uh, on nursing gel, you know, adding C60 to nursing gel uh, for new mothers and things like that. Just, you know, like I said, more cosmetics, but therapeutic products. And here's an example of that. So these are the patents that have already been approved. And then there's actually some patent applications that are pending approval and they're still they're still in the works. And so now there's now a. Uh, there's a patent application right now for adding black seed oil, MCT, and curcumin to C60, which goes all along the whole concept of additives, uh, coox in herb inhibitors, ketone esters, and then there's one for CBD oil or can cannabinoids, right, with C60 mixed with cannabinoids. So you're seeing people, and this is the thing, we got to remember everybody, it's only been three years since C60 took off as a health supplement so we're saying that hey within three years you've got people and it's like it's like the you know it's like a gold rush right people are nailing down these patents for some of the products that i've been talking about and if you're out there making c60 and you're seriously into it and you've got a lot invested you seriously need to a read some of these patents right and or file your own if you've got a unique idea and i'm just telling you you need to check this out because if you read this solubility patent and i'm not a patent lawyer so this is not advice and, I, and i'm not a professional patent reader by any means but as i read that patent it looks like that patent covers uh any c60 oil that's got uh, greater than 0.8 milligrams per milliliters which means if you're making or you think you're going to launch a product that's got like one or two, you know, uh, uh, grams per liter in it, um, and you want to call it the super saturated, you know, see, then you might be infringing on this patent. And then on this patent application, if you decide to start doing a black seed oil C60 or MCT or curcumin, then here's a patent that someone's already filed and said, no, no, you can't. I, I, I patent that, right? And it's CBD, right? So people are out there grabbing land. Uh, and so, uh, you know, grabbing, you know, staking their flags in the ground on what they're going to claim is theirs. So if you're out there developing, you need to be checking these patents and you need to protect yourself. Otherwise, you may be infringement and you're going to be talking to a lot of lawyers here in the future. So keep an eye on the patents and let's talk about the next thing I want to talk about. And let's talk about fuller nulls. Fuller nulls, okay, is a C60 molecule with oxygen, hydrogen, uh, atoms uh, connected to it. And there's like a multiple points on the C60 molecule that you can add different atoms, okay? 
So it is, it, you know, so here's the list of different fullerenes that are, that are out there right now. You have everything nano diamond, uh, diamonds to graphene, fullerenes, you know. Uh, but then you've got carbon atoms. We'll talk about that. But here's the fullerene molecule. And then this is what it looks like once you start adding different atoms to it. And that when you start doing it and you have a chemical, uh, you know, uh, chemically modified uh, C60 atom, I'm sorry, molecule, that's got oxygen and hydrogen molecules on it. It's now it's called a fullernol. That's what it's called. And the N stands for the number of pairs of the oxygen hydrogen pairs that are attached to it. And you can have anywhere from two to you know, like 24, 36. Okay. It all depends on how many different oxygen hydrogen atoms are attached to this. And if once you start attaching it, they do different things, which is where I want to I want to go over that. So in, when you look at the science literature on fullernols, it doesn't look that great. And I want my my point is is that you know, it's it's out there, and people are actually creating products or researching to create products for it. And when you do your when you do your first dive into fullernols, you know, which is a C60 derivative, and you go, well, well, gee, if I look at it, and I look at like cytotoxicity of water soluble fullerenes and vascular endothelial cells. These are some studies that come up. You know, this one study said we found that fullerene causes cytotoxic injury to, or cell death in vascular ECs. You know, and then uh, and, and it goes on indicating that exposure to fullerene could represent a risk for arthrosclerosis or arth- arthrosclerosis and ischemic heart disease. I think that's how you pronounce that. All right. So that doesn't sound good. So why would anyone be making a product for you to take a fullernol if it does that? And then you've got another one here on this research study called Binding Fullernol uh, C60OH24 to DNA. Right, and it says, hey, you know, it full and all binds to phosphate backbones outside native D, uh, DSNNA and to base pairs with major groove of sodium salts. Okay, bottom line, it, it binds to your DNA. Don't know about you, but I really don't want to be taking anything that's going to bind to my DNA. So, I mean, it's like, it, so it doesn't look good on the surface until I ran across a, a study called Review of Synthesis and Antioxidant Potential of Fullerol Nanoparticles. And so what was so important in this study that, that really kind of like, oh, I get it now. Why are fullanols a, where do we go from here, possible health supplement in the C60 world is because of this. This data, and they did this big giant study, suggests that the antioxidant effects of fullanol derivatives depends on their chemical structure. So when we start taking a look, okay, about, C- or about fullanol uh, structures, what's really, really critical here is that is that you can have, like I said, multiple different kinds of furlanols depending on how many OH uh, you know, molecule pairs are attached to the C60 molecule. But what's most important in here, and there's a, there's a, there's a table in here I want to get to, is in this study, here you go. Here you go. Depending on the furlanol, okay, because remember now it's C60OHN. So depending on the OH pairs attached to the uh, furlanol, and also, uh, it's you know how they deliver it, okay. And and this is oh by the way, this is what people mean when they say water soluble fullerene, or water soluble C60. Okay, I want to point out something that's really confusing. C60 is not water soluble. You cannot take pristine C60, meaning it's just 60 carbon atoms, and mix it with water, and drink it. Then you'll just pass. It'll just pass right through you. But if you add OH atoms to it. Okay, it becomes water soluble. So whenever you hear the phrase water soluble C60, it's not C60, it's a fullernol. Okay, very important. But here's my point. In this study, it actually shows what different combinations of C60 and OH can do in the studies that they've done. And so, um, and this is like basically right here. Like if you look at some of these and you've got, like I said, uh, you know, you've got some microconial dysfunction, so you've got some pretty nasty things happening, depending on the formulation of this of the fullernol. But then you've got some incredible stuff happening when you have a specific, you know, uh, formulation. So that's the point I want to make: is that fullernol comes in a multiple of different uh, flavors, and depending on what flavor or color you get, <laughs> it's going to do a different thing. So that's probably the most important takeaway: is that as you see these products come on the market, it's so important to go. 
what kind of folanol did you use? What's in that? Uh, and and be very very cautious because you know yeah it'd be awesome it's be awesome to have neuroprotective antioxidant effects having uh, like right here so, uh, you don't want cell death okay let's let's skip that one uh, uh, you know autophagy and cell growth yeah I want that effect but how do I get it which C60 or which folanol do I need to have to do that and anti tumor anti metastatic activities modulation of oxidative stress in tumor tissues that's C60 OH20 so this table and this study is so helpful to kind of understand fullernols to demonstrate to you that there are different kinds of fullernols and it really depends on which one that you're, uh, you're, you're messing around with, uh, you know, so that you can understand, hey, this is either going to be a good one, positive results, or this is going to mess me up. And so it, I think that as the different companies that are looking at developing this, focusing on the good ones and make sure that they don't mix in with any of the mess you up ones, you're going to see a, I think we're going to see fullanols really take off the good ones. Okay. And so one of the things I want to point out to you right now, it's, it's already done. It's already taking off. And that's why I see this as a, where do you go from here? Because it's already taking off. You can already buy fullanols, Solaris and MTR sell it. And there are already products out there that have it out there. So let me kind of show you like here's Solaris and Solaris is already selling uh, a C60 uh, fullanol, okay? And then you've got MTR sells fullanols as well, so you can actually buy the raw materials to make products, but you've got C60 18 through 22, uh, 22 to 26, uh, and you've got four. And so here's the 24 one that, that was mentioned in the study. So you can buy different fullanols depending on what combination or formula you want. Uh, and then, of course, you know, for uh, making your own. By the way, I, I don't intend to do any DIY stuff yet until I get a much better handle on exactly which full and all to use for what specific thing I want to create. But it, it's something I'll be tinking with in the future, but I'm, I'm really kind of cautious about because of what I read. And then lastly, there is actually a product out there. There is a product right now called, uh, whatever they call this, the water-soluble carbon-60. Again, again, they're saying it's C60. It's not C60. It's full and all. Uh, it, and it's so important. And so the thing about it, though, is that they've got the N here, and nowhere in their literature did they say which fullernol it is. So, you know, if you're going to be going out there and trying some of this, you really need to be talking to these guys and saying, well, what fullernol did you put in there, you know, so that you have an understanding of, okay, what you could expect and or make sure you don't get messed up. Now, also, too, in terms of products, there's a video, a uh, link in the description below, uh, where uh, uh, David Wolf was on the Alphabetic Show recently. And he, for about 20 minutes, he's talking about C60. And in that video, David Wolf also says that his company is looking at fullernols as a product and also looking at carbon nano onions as a product. So not only do you already have one product on the market, you've got another one for sure already looking at developing products uh, uh, based on fullernols uh, in terms of where do we go from here. So I, I expect this to grow. We're going to hear a lot more about fullernols in the future. Now, let's talk about carbon nano onions. Now, carbon nano onions is not a C60 molecule. It is a actually separate, different fullernol, and it's called a carbon nano onion because you've got cages of fullerenes inside cages of fullerenes inside cages of fullerenes. So it's like an onion. That's why they call it that. And so that's the thing. It, it, you know, this molecule is just extremely complicated. There's hundreds of atoms, but what's interesting about the carbon nano onion in terms of a fullerene for as a health supplement is that it's being led by a very specific science team and these are not these are not amateurs these are very professional scientists out there looking at how fullerenes can be utilized and this is what's unique about this is that it's it's the first fullerene outside of C70 like C70 there's only one C70 product that I'm even aware of sold by Red Lion in terms of trying to see how other fullerenes can impact uh, people's health and wellness and whether or not the product will take off it's been three years it's been for sale for three years and no one else has done a c70 product and you know so i don't think that one's really going to go anywhere in terms of it did, you know it didn't take off as well as c60 did but then when you talk about fullernols you know there's a very strong uh propon you know propendency for it to take off and then when you talk about carbon nano onions here's again a different fullerene just like c70 that has the potential. So now this entire product, this entire concept stems on this three-part uh, study that's quoted often in the literature about this product. 
and this product that's uh, a carbon nano onion product for health and it's this this study is called will nano on carbon i'm sorry will nano carbon onion like fullerenes uh, play a decisive role in the future of molecular medicine and so the abstract simply just says mitochondria are central to the defense by our energetics biosynthesis replication and other metabolic activities of the cell Yes, mitochondria uh, perturbation triggers a cascade of cellular defenses that affect the entire organism. Unabated, this per uh, perturbation can cause impairment of whole body systems resulting in chronic genetic. Okay, this is all about um, mitochondria. But the idea, though, is due to their unique structure, carbon nano onions, uh, and properties, fullerenes may have significant benefit, uh, beneficial effects in humans. Okay, so this was their abstract, and this was their theory or, or hypothesis that, you know, hey, this could work, and then they wrote a three-part study. And what's interesting about this three-part study, and they created a product, by the way, and they tested it on rats, but they tried it on humans and rats at the same time. So what makes this really unique, guys, is that they tested it on humans. And so on part three of this study, okay, they basically had some volunteers, and, they, and it wasn't clinical, right? It was just volunteers. And then they studied the reactions of the volunteers uh, who took uh, what this carbon nano on your product, uh, and, and the, which they call graphics. Okay, the product's called graphics. And so here's a quote right out of here. Obviously, it's if you want to read more about it, it's on the website and or in my directory. The study is. But it basically, I want to quote this one section of the, of the study where it says, All subjects reported favorable results associated, to it, associated with their use of graphics. Subjective benefits varied with the individual and included feelings of increased energy and endurance, improved mental clarity and cognition, and noticeable reduction in previous joint pain and inflammation and overall good health. Now, of course, this study is about graphics, uh, you know, promoted by the company that makes graphics. So, you know, uh, take it for what you will, because this is what they found. And of course, they want to, you know, you want good results. And it sounds great, but it's from the person that's selling it. But here's another thing I want to point out is if you go onto the website, they have a web page dedicated to the results of other research that they did. And this is what really perked my interest about carbon nano onions. This is right off the page of their research page, and they basically tested it on rats. So not only did they give some volunteers some graphics, and they went ahead and tried it, and they said, hey, it's good. Um, but they also had rats, and this is this is the only thing about it. It wasn't. It was done uh, at the University of New York. Okay, and this is, and I'm just going to quote this last little uh, part of this uh, thing. It says the graphics material apparently not only stopped the growth of the prostate cancer on the. I'm sorry, they use mice, mouse, uh, mouse, but also prolonged its life from a normal lifespan of 24 weeks to an an, an extended lifespan extended life of 96 weeks okay five of the other eight mice that was uh, microwave and graphics treated having the same expected lifespan as those mentioned above lived anywhere from 104 weeks to 132 okay now if that doesn't make you go whoa really um, I mean that's that was my first reaction I was like wow Really? I mean, you know, and so here's the thing. There hasn't been independent third-party analysis of graphics slash carbon nano onions, okay, um, in, ter in use, uh, you know, for, for biological responses. So I'm, I'm on the fence. Uh, I think this is amazing. I don't doubt its authenticity because the scientists behind it. However, I, I'm going to be waiting. I'm one of those people. I want to wait for the second and third study by, like, say, the Japanese or whomever, you know, somebody has <laughs> studied this thing, and, and before I'll jump into the deep end of this pool. But I think that we're, when we talk about where do we go from here and you look at the results of this study on this particular fullerene, you know, not only the, you know, the human study, but the, but, the, but the mouse study, it's pretty amazing, and it's kind of a big wow. And I think, I think that... There's something there. I think, where do we go from here? Are we going to be seeing carbon nano onions in the future along with fullernols? I, I would guess that we are. If this is what happened, I think we're going to see it. And I think it's going to be an amazing development uh, in, in the fullerene slash C60 uh, industry. Okay, now my last one I want to kind of share with you in the area of where do we go from here is that C60 optics. You know... It's so hard to wrap my head around this, but the C60 optics is being provided by Bioptron, and it's called Bioptron Quantum Hyperlight. 
with fullerene filters, okay? Now, there's a patent on it. Uh, it's an Australian patent that they have on this technology. And the claims of the patent is that it's, if when you use this quantum hyperlight with, through a fullerene filter, that it aids in wound healing, in pain relief, in skin diseases, and depression, and anti-aging. Okay, these are some incredible claims. Now we all, all know, for anybody who studied light, you know that uh, biophotons, biophotons are a critical aspect to our health and well-being. We wouldn't even be alive without them. Light is important. For those of you living in the northern hemisphere, go get a red light, please. You know, and then watch out for blue light. All these different light spectrums truly affect us. We are part and parcel beings of light, okay, as well as beings of energy. So light is so critical. And so these folks are saying that when you take a hyperlight, a quantum hyperlight, which is one of their medical devices, and you put it through uh, a fullerene filter, you'll have some incredible benefits. So I think this is one of those fair use claims. I just took a, a snippet out of one of their videos, and I wanted to share it with you so you have an understanding of what they're talking about. Zepta scientist, a professor in nanophotonics, Dr. Juro Karuga has discovered that C60 can change the structure of any light. Bioptron company created the revolutionary nanophotonic fullerene optics which acts as a nanophotonic generator to transform vertically linearly polarized light into hyperpolarized light, Bioptron quantum hyperlight, that can heal humans and all living beings at the quantum level. How is this possible? Hyperharmonized light possesses the same type of symmetry as 85% of our healthy biostructures. Such ideally permanently structured hyperlight through resonance imposes its ideal structured properties onto the disturbed biomolecules on the quantum level bringing them in the same status and the whole body into homeostasis. Bioptron quantum hyperlight can help you maintain, regulate and revitalize physiological processes to maintain or attain optimal health. So there you go. I mean, that's pretty amazing. When I, when I did my Alt-C60 series, you know, I stopped that frequency. I never even thought about C60 as a light form. And here you go. Someone's developed it, patented it, and these are serious scientists in Australia developing the product in Europe. So this thing, I mean, the device itself runs about 1,160 euro, and the fullerene filters are an extra two or 300 or, uh, uh, you know, euro. So, you know, for about like 13 or I say 14, 1,500 euro, uh, that's what this device costs. So is it going to be widespread? No. Uh, <laughs> uh, but our different wellness centers are going to adopt it, and here is another alternative way to expose yourself to C60 is through biophotonics. And I think that is amazing. And this was part of the research that I was doing uh, for where do we go from here. And I want to leave you with this thought is that, you know, the future of C60 is amazing. I mean, it's just like I said earlier, it's like, can you imagine back in 1986 when, when the team at Rice University discovered C60 that they had any idea where it was going to go? You know, 30, 40 years later, I mean, people are doing C60 topically, frequency, inhalation, and now through biophotonics. It's just amazing to me. And, you know, I, I kind of geek out on all this C60 stuff, but I got to tell you, between the fullernols, the carbon nano onions, and this, I think our future for the C60 environment and the C60 community is just going to be amazing. 2021 be pretty cool so anyway all of this all the foundations for all of this stuff i just mentioned it's all in place the products are out there you can go buy graphics you can buy fuller and all you can buy this biophotron device it's there it's already there so 2021 will be an interesting year to watch as these things start to blossom okay that's it i you know i went uh one hour 16 i'm sorry this is the longest video i ever made but i, I got really excited and i wanted to share all of my research, and I think that, uh, you know, it, it's just like, again, I, I see 60 is just such an amazing molecule, and we keep finding out what more it can do, and, and it just gets even more amazing. So, but thank you so much for, for watching. Thank you for staying all the way to the end. Uh, I really appreciate your time, and, you know, I really appreciate your interest, and, and I do uh, appreciate, and I'm very humbled again by your, your kind comments in the video section. Uh, so thank you so much. Now, if you want to learn more about C60, I do have a blog, and I have a huge chunk of my blog is dedicated to C60, as you can imagine, and it's over at the Tinkers Academy. So you just type tinkers.academy in your URL, your browser window, and that'll take you right to my website. Also, link below. And then, of course, we have a C60 Good Vibes Telegram chat group. 
Uh, and that is just a, a open discussion about all things C60. Come on over, you know, join the chat. Um, and, uh, and if you have any questions uh, about making it yourself or just anything in general, a lot of really super smart people that know a lot about C60 hang out there. So again, you know, come join us if you want. Learn more if you want. And thank you again. I really, really appreciate your time. Thank you for staying all the way to the end. Uh, and, you know, like we say in Hawaii, mahalo. Uh, and have a great day. Aloha.